As a born and raised Canadian gal, I definitely know, this isn't a thing, I know I have a lot of experience when it comes to cold weather dressing. The Great White North proves to be quite tricky sometimes, but in this video I'm hoping to bring you 15 winter essentials that I think would make an incredible addition to your winter capsule wardrobe. These are 15 essentials that I have found not only have helped me get through the season ahead, the dark days of winter, but they've also made me feel good whenever I am out and about wearing these combinations. And I also wanna show you how far they can go and speak a little bit to the history of each piece, just proving that they are each and individually timeless in their own right. Now, I'm not saying that you need to buy every single one of these pieces. In fact, I almost guarantee that you have a ton of these already in your wardrobe. Rather, this video is to inspire you to maybe write something on your wish list or even just go shopping in your own wardrobe to say, hey, yeah, I actually do have that combination and this makes me excited for colder weather. Now in this video, I'm not gonna be including the huge parka, the huge scarves, the gloves, and the huge boots. We know that those are winter wardrobe essentials. These pieces are more for those milder days or the days that you can layer and put this whole outfit underneath the parka. Those days, they are looming. If you're new here, welcome to my channel. My name's Amanda. I love to talk about style, lifestyle, and travel when I can. And if you're coming back to the channel, hey, welcome back to this cozy little nook of the internet. Let's dive right in. I am just gonna change my shirt real quickly because this beautiful white poplin cotton shirt keeps crinkling in the audio and it's gonna drive me insane. The joys of filming at home. The first one is the white roll neck specifically. I love a knit during the winter and I, I can almost guarantee that if you are someone who loves a little bit of cozy, you do too. Now, this is a white roll neck from Uncle Studios. I have been really loving that one. It needs debobbling, but it's got some great structure to it and the neck is really beautiful. But I also wanted to show you, if you're not someone who is like a cream girly, you don't love to wear cream a whole bunch, and maybe you're in your mom era and you're thinking, oh, that's a little dangerous right now. There are so many options for roll neck. Now, hilariously enough, I'm wearing a roll neck here, but these aren't roll necks. These are just turtlenecks. And this is kind of just the vibes we're going for. All three of these are from H&M. They are very affordable and these are my favorite turtlenecks. If you've been at this channel before, you know the drill. You know that I love these so much and I just recently got them in a few different colors. They're so versatile. They're so easy to layer. They are so warm and they are so cozy. This is a sure-fired winter staple. I don't know if I could trust someone who didn't have a turtleneck in their wardrobe. I'm just saying. So those ones specifically were the oversized turtleneck, but the next winter essential is the slim fit turtleneck. Again, so great for layering and specifically, I think in terms of a wardrobe essential, black needs to be the case. This is one of my favorite ones from Zara. It's just a part of their Simple Basics collection. They always have it in. This is absolutely one that's been around for a long time. Popularized in the 19th century, this then gained a ton of steam through the 20th century and is truly just a symbol of sophistication. So if your three words of personal style include anything from elegant, chic, sophisticated, classic, you're definitely gonna want to have a slim fit black turtleneck in the mix. A cutie little Canadian hack too. I will put that turtleneck under the first wardrobe essential and then boom, we got some warm layering and that neck is nice and covered. The next thing for tops is just a long sleeve. This one's from Skims and I have been really, really loving this piece. I'll link everything that I talk about that I can down below that are my favorites. The long sleeve is such a wardrobe essential, especially for layering. As we already mentioned, you hilariously could wear this long sleeve, your slim turtleneck, and then the thick turtleneck, and there you go. You are chalet chic and nice and cozy and warm. But these actually evolved from being undergarments to now being standalone pieces. I was sent this one. I got it in a small personally, but they do have a large range of sizes, so it's worth checking out. Plus, I would always go for a long sleeve that is in a neutral color. I chose to go with the gray, but you could go white, black, or a cream, just depending on what really suits your style and your color palette. That rule as well stands for everything in this essentials video. Next up for tops, this is the second last one. We have just the crew neck knit. Now I recommend gray for this one. I think this kind of tone of gray looks incredible on every one of every hair color, skin color, 
what have you. These crew necks are so fun because they actually have military origins. And now they've just really evolved in our wardrobes to have that really practical, sophisticated, but then casual feel. I would recommend now in this year and moving into the next, we are now in 2023, 2024, and it may stand for the future too. Getting an oversized crew neck is actually the way to go. There's a ton of ways that you can style an oversized look that really give an edge to your outfit, whether you are looking for something that's more casual or sophisticated as we make our way through these essentials you'll notice that all of these can really lend themselves to each category this one's from H&M it's nice and comfortable and I just love being able to layer a turtleneck under this having this as a standalone piece or even a white shirt to dress it up just a little bit more with some preppy flair we come back to the loud shirt I love this shirt so much this one's from Holland Cooper it was from Victoria's collection but another white shirt that I'm really interested in is from Suzanne on the max shirt i've heard a lot about that so i will link that one down below because i believe this one might be sold out but nonetheless the white shirt has to be a classic wardrobe staple for at least three out of the four main seasons and the white shirt has actually evolved since the victorian era that is how long it has been an essential so tried tested and true through more eras than taylor swift the white poplin shirt is definitely a way to go now i would say if you are not someone who loves the structure of a white poplin shirt this is something that is on my wardrobe wish list and that is to find the perfect silk blouse i had one that was quite tight fitting and i actually gave it away because i didn't like that I had gotten it so tight fitting. I think I want one that's a bit more oversized. They just lend themselves to just this like sexy sophistication with a little French tuck. I love that, especially in an ivory or a cream. That is something that's on my wish list. So let me know if you have one in your wardrobe down below and you found the perfect one. But I just think the fact that you can style this or a silk shirt in so many different ways, it's a no brainer. It's one of those pieces you can always call upon as well. If you are having a Zoom meeting or you're going in for a meeting, that even with a pair of jeans just looks so sophisticated. The epitome of elegance. The next wardrobe essential I would say is a wardrobe essential for me and my three words, but you might be like, pass, don't wear dresses. But the next wardrobe essential for me is a dress. And I like to call these my editor dresses. And the reason why I call them that is because if I was going to go into a magazine meeting and I was meeting with the editor or I was the editor, I would think mm, I feel really smart in that. But there's two different ones that I include. This is the one that I would definitely call my editor dress and that is because it is a shirt dress. It's got that silky feel to it, especially during the winter months. I just think this is so beautiful. I need to wear this to more things than a funeral. I honestly need to style this more. So I'm glad we pulled this out for the essentials video. And then as well, this one from Karen Millen. It is so fun when I have an event to go to. I know I can put this on and be a showstopper. And these are clearly two very different dresses. I honestly think that if you lean more towards feminine style, a dress definitely needs to be in your wardrobe essentials. A quick note here, this isn't actually part of my essentials, but I wanted to note this. I didn't want to include this in the 15, but this is so an essential for me. These are sheer text tights. I ordered four pairs of these during their sale during Black Friday, and I am so happy to have them now back in my wardrobe. These are indestructible. They are incredible tights. I will never buy tights from anywhere else. I literally tried on a pair of tights the other day and immediately they ripped and I was infuriated. I'm not spending any more money on crappy tights. Sheer tights are the only way to go and I include this in this section because when you wear your editor dress, no bare legs during the winter, not for me, especially when I'm in Canada. And I mean, we're, we're lucky if they get shaved. I'm not gonna lie <laughs> because it's extra warmth to me. So these are definitely a must. This one kind of falls in the same vein as the dress. So hide your eyes if you don't have more of a feminine style. This is the maxi or the midi skirt. I think I found my perfect maxi skirt. This is from a company called Dish. They're an Australian brand. And in Australian brands we trust. I just feel like anytime I order from Australia, it's always going to be the most beautiful design and these ones i love because of the pleating down the front and the back here i got it both in black and cream if you were going to add just one skirt to your wardrobe especially for an essential if you're like you know what amanda that's the thing i'm missing definitely go for black 
100%. And the thing I love about this skirt specifically, not only the length, I am 5'7", so that's your reference point when you're seeing me in outfits. It's that I can wear a heeled boot, feel so elegant, it hugs my hips. It's not specifically like an A-line satin skirt, which you could definitely say is a wardrobe essential. For me, I like something like this a little bit more, it lends more to my style. But the reason I love these is because there are belt loops. And I think the more you can add a belt to an outfit, the better it's gonna be. Because adding a belt always adds a layer of being put together, I love expanding my belt collection. It's a point in your wardrobe where you can add a little bit of fun if you do add a colorful belt. You won't see a lot of color in an essentials video, but nonetheless, I just think this is such a great wardrobe staple. The maxi skirt, the mini skirt, that has been evolving over trends over years and years and years, whether we're adding volume, taking it away, adding length, taking it away. I just feel as though at this point now, I know my personal style, so I don't need to see a trend to know that this is going to be a mainstay in my wardrobe. Also, how cute does it look? From sneakers to heels, I love it all. I get made fun of all the time from my friends, specifically my one friend, Monica, because I love wearing jeans. I love denim so much. I will wear denim on a long haul flight. Don't hate me, come at me in the comments. It'll just help the engagement, okay? These are my new favorite jeans. They are the Holland Cooper ones. I get a 10 regular and they are extremely long. So for my tall girlies out there who have such a tough time finding jeans, if you get these in a long, you are going to be so set and sorted. Now, I like this, this is a boot cut. I know that's not 100% the trend of the year. Straight cut is definitely more the trend of the year, but I haven't found my perfect pair yet. I'm still on the hunt. I love a straight cut and I loved an oversized denim, but these are my go-to every day, but I just know I wanna feel really put together. So these are my wardrobe essential. If you are looking for a pair of denim or you're kind of trudging through your wardrobe, trying to find your best pair out of all of them, I would highly recommend a dark wash. Dark wash is always gonna come across a little bit more elegant, a little bit more sophisticated. And if you can get it so they are not distressed at all, well, that's a bonus on top. Denim was really popularized in the 1950s and originally it was more for laborers, but as you can see, year after year, denim will always be on a trend list and it's less that denim is the trend, it's more how are we wearing denim? Oversized, cropped, mom jean, ankle cut, boot cut, straight cut. There are so many different ways that you can explore the world of denim, but the key for an essential is finding the one that works best for you. And don't let anybody tell you otherwise. Becoming really popular for women's fashion in the early 20th century is the trouser. The trouser is such a great staple. And if you are at all on fashion TikTok, you have heard the phrase, a trouser and a white shirt is the new jeans and a white shirt. I am leaning so much more into trousers than I have ever before. And these have been my perfect one. Very affordable on the high street. These are the Abercrombie Sloan trouser. I've also tried the Reformation Mason pant. Did not like them as much. They were super long. They got super crinkly. I still have them. I still wear them. They look really cool, but they're high maintenance. These ones aren't at all. They are so beautifully made. I have worn them so many times. They have, um, of course, the belt loops, amazing pleating, the double secure at the top. I just think a great trouser in your wardrobe, especially a black pair of trousers, a dark gray pair, and maybe during the spring, a cream pair can go so, so, so far, especially if you love a bit more of a minimal Scandi style. Next up, popularized from men's suiting and the late 20th centuries when it picked up for women is blazers. Blazers have been the talk of the town for the past few years, whether it's oversized or cropped blazers, there is so much, again, just in the blazer world to explore. But in terms of your winter wardrobe essentials, I would go for a classic camel or a classic black. These are going to get you so incredibly far in just creating outfits. Blazers immediately add a touch of sophistication and they can truly go over the most basic outfit from, like I said, the jeans and a white t-shirt. You throw a blazer over top of that and boom, you are ready to go to a meeting and you automatically square your shoulders a little bit more. These are the two that I just purchased from Odd Muse. I have had a devil of a time trying to find my perfect blazer and I think I have officially done it. These ones don't have buttons. Actually, do they? I, oh yeah, they have one button. It's so funny, I literally just got these and I've just started styling them. So making this video has been a lot of fun for me because it's given me actual time to play with them. But they came with two belts and these belts secure them in such a fun, sophisticated way, cinching at the waist that really draws you in. But then the oversized feel 
of the sleeves gives you that, I don't know, that more modern feel. And I cannot wait to style these in a future travel video, um, but you'll have to sit tight for that. But these also come in a few different colors. I would just recommend to go for something that is nice and neutral, that's gonna mix and match in your wardrobe so easy, because that's what makes this an essential. Ah, the trench, the trench. I feel like there will never be an essentials video that is a shoulder season without including a trench. This is also new to my wardrobe and I've been on the hunt for my perfect trench for years. I had a Zara one, I had a Karen Millen one, and finally the Shauna Joy one has brought me so much joy because it is my perfect cut. And this is one of those pieces where I'm like, okay, might be getting that in a few different colors. The trench became very popular after World War I. This is how long we have been seeing the trench in the zeitgeist, and it has been just a mainstay in men and women's wardrobes. And I think when it comes to winter dressing, the trench can be tricky when you're in places like Canada because you picture Canada in the winter and it's not exactly trench weather. But there are most certainly days that are a little bit milder or that lead in from fall into winter and then winter into spring, where a trench, no matter what, can be a winter essential. It just might be on the bookends of the season. Next up, and the final outerwear piece, is a wool coat. I'm actually having a hard time holding this with both hands because wool coats are very heavy. I have this one from Club Monaco that I have had, I wanna say, for over six years at least. This one has been so, so, so beautiful. And my newest addition, if you've been here for the last couple of videos or some of my most recent TikToks has been the Aritzia slouch wool jacket. I have already been wearing this coat out and about so much and it's been wonderful. It is so incredibly warm. When I was doing research about when the wool coat originated, there were so many conflicting sources because that's how long it's been around. People were saying the Egyptians, people were saying centuries ago. The wool coat has been one of those pieces that has been keeping people warm for years and years. It's really important when shopping for a wool coat to look at the contents. The more wool is gonna keep you warmer. Wool is a great fabric, a great natural fabric, because even if it gets wet, it will still keep you warm. And that's why a wool sweater, if you have that on beside a crackling fireplace, I'm already starting to sweat. For 2023 and 2024 winter fashion as well, if you are looking for a wool coat specifically, the black wool coat is the biggest trend this year. Gaining popularity during the 20th century, the white trainer. That's because there was a big fitness boom. I feel like it has been Pinterest that has taught me the most that I can wear a white sneaker with a dress and I can wear a white sneaker with a trouser. And I really feel like it just has this certain type of cool factor and this gravitas to it that that person is just confident and comfortable in what they're wearing. A white sneaker can be great whether you are dressing it up to go to the office, now keep them clean, or if you are walking around a city. That's, I think, the thing that's most important to me is when I'm going on a city break, a white sneaker will always be something that I pack. And even though winter bodes itself well to having snowy conditions, again, on those days that are a little milder, that you're not grabbing for something that has a tread and a really high amount of fleece content in it, you can definitely rock a white sneaker in the winter. Not for the snowy days, but maybe the days you're going from the car to the restaurant or even just running into the office. Sometimes as well, when it comes to winter dressing and winter outfits, I remember when I was working in an office, I would wear my boots and pack my shoes with me. So that's something to consider as well when we're putting together these outfits. But whoop, it's honestly not one of my videos unless I am dropping something. But two shoes to consider that I'm actually clumping into the exact same tip is either Mary Jane's or ballet flats. Ballet flats really started to see the forefront in the 1950s popularized by ballet shoes. Makes a lot of sense. I think you probably could have drawn that conclusion without me telling you. But this is something you may not know. Mary Jane's became popular via a comic strip from this one comic strip called Buster Brown named after the character Mary Jane. I feel like both of these shoes have a very similar style, but if you are someone who absolutely hates ballet flats, give Mary Jane's a try, especially again, if you have feminine style. Sorry if you don't, you may have already clicked off this video, I have feminine style, so these are essentially my winter wardrobe essentials. Myself, personally, I am kind of out of my heel era. I don't really see myself wearing four inch heels anymore. I definitely feel like there is room for a strappy heel or a pump or something like that that 
fit specifically in with a wardrobe, but I wouldn't say that is ever a part of my essentials. I very much like lower shoes. I want to be comfortable. I want to be able to walk around. And the Polo Babies from Suzanne have been a really great option. Those are the Mary Janes. They are patent as well. They have that sophisticated feel, that French feel, because they are from a brand like Suzanne. And I just, when I look at shoes like that, I am thinking about my other side hustle, like shooting weddings, for example. I could wear those during a wedding day and still feel really good, secure, but beautiful and put together at the same time. And last but not least, you have probably seen this coming from a mile away if you've been on this channel for the last couple of videos, and that is my black knee-high boots. Now, I am also gonna include these ones. These ones are from Dolce Vita. These ones are from Aloha's, and I love them so much. They are, they literally have retro in the name, and they are just so stunning. Popularized in the 1950s, knee-high boots have been a huge topic of conversation. I feel like we went through this one period of time through the 2000s where it was over the knee boots, but knee-high boots are very much in and have entered the chat once again. I have learned a lot when it comes to styling where a booty fits and where a knee-high boot fits. When you are wearing a midi skirt, it is so much better for your figure to elongate yourself to wear a knee-high boot over a booty. The booty really just cuts you off, makes you look a little bit stumpier, gives you that meat sandwich, which we talk about a lot here, um, whereas a knee-high boot really elongates you. And if you only have the budget to get one pair and you love the look of a booty underneath a jean, you can get a knee-high boot that really hugs your calf nicely. So if you have a straight cut or a boot cut jean, you can still wear this underneath your pair of jeans and you're almost getting that double use for both. If you're looking for winter sophistication outside of your boots that have a huge tread, a knee-high boot is the way to go 100%. Out of all of these, I would be so curious to know what you currently have in your wardrobe and what is on your wish list. I definitely could have mentioned a jacket like this as well. I mean, there are so many other pieces that I was looking at my wardrobe thinking, oh, that could be added as well, like leather gloves and, and just different things like that. A jacket, there are so many other pieces. But when it comes to really creating a capsule and all of the outfits that you saw today in this video were created by simply just these pieces. And it just makes dressing really easy when you peel things back and stick to the essentials, especially during a really busy time of year, it can kind of help you with some decision fatigue. I hope that you maybe found some inspiration today and you liked this video. And if you've made it this far, please do leave me the sparkle emoji. It's my favorite emoji. I would love to see who made it this far. And if you did and you're not a part of this cozy little nook of the internet, please join. We'd love to have you. In a future video, I'm gonna be sharing some of my favorite winter outfit formulas so we can kind of dive right in and go a little bit deeper and help you shop your own wardrobe to stay warm and stay stylish this season. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.